in class. How good it, why even I'm looking at some girls today, Emily and Lily, oh my word, am I glad to have you back and all you guys, man, you're hanging tough with me. It's good to see you. I hope you're all having a great time. I sure miss being here. I really do. And uh, I'm going to make it up to you. You wait and see. Thing about Brother Jeff, he'll come around. Once we get rid of this COVID pandemic, I'll be coming back. And then we're going to, well, we're having a great time now, but we'll have a greater time. Well, I want to just say thank you for your faithfulness. I, the way you guys come to church and the way that you participate says a lot right there. And I'm just really proud of all of you. It means, it means a lot to me and to Sister Robin, and to Pastor Johnson, and, and the whole church looking at you. It, it, it means so much, and you are growing in God. And our, I'm going to talk to you today about the light of God and how it can change our lives. It still changes our lives today. And we're going to look at a man that we would hardly think that he would ever be a Christian or obey the law of God. Why? Let me tell you before time, before I tell you his name, before time, he was responsible for taking men and women, parents and grandparents, and leaving the kids alone and taking the parents and throwing them in prison because they believed the gospel. They believed Jesus Christ was a was the Almighty God, and he hated it. He, he went to the Jewish Sanhedrin. He says, I want letters. I'm going to take letters to the different governors, and I'm going to start rounding up people, throwing them in jail, if they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the man I'm talking about, and what we're talking about today, is in the ninth chapter of the book of Acts. And we're going to pick up at verse number three in there. And he journeyed, he came near to Damascus. So what? And he was traveling, and the Bible says, and suddenly there shined a light around him from heaven. It was so powerful of a light now, I've never seen a light this powerful, but the light knocks him to the ground from off his donkey. Now, that would take some doing to have a light that bright, and he just couldn't hide from it. And he realized that was from God. And he began to say, Lord, Lord, Lord who are you? And the voice came back in verse 5. And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It's hard for you to pick a, kick against the, the, the pricks, the, the truth, Saul. Now I'm going to tell you what I want you to do. And for, as a result of this light, the Bible said there were scales that were formed on Saul's eyes so he could not see. That's one thing I tell you, boys and, and, and girls that are in here, to be blind or in total darkness is a petrifying, scary moment. It can be so traumatic, or I mean so scary. It, men that have been lost in caves where there was no light, they were young men, and they were in there for a day or more, they're, they would come out and their hair would be completely white. And their eyes would, would take a long time to adjust to the light. Saul was blinded. He had to trust whoever was taking him. Imagine you being blind, uh, a couple of you, and you had to depend on your friend to take you around. Boy, that's... That's trusting someone right there. 
And the Bible said that they took him to Damascus and there was a man that was praying to God. And the Lord came to this man, Ananias, and he told him, he says, I want you to go to a street called Straight and I want you to pray for Saul. And right away the man kind of jolted. He says, Saul, kill me. He says, you just do as I've commanded you. As a result, he listened to the voice of God. You see someone so terrible. Sometimes you think, boys and girls, that you are so bad that God doesn't, he can't hear you. But he does. And he wants to wash away your sins. And any time that after you've been baptized and got the Holy Ghost, you may sin, God forgives. And Saul, or Ananias, went to Saul, prayed for him. He received the Holy Ghost and was baptized. And the scales fell off his eyes. And what happened to Saul? His name was changed to Paul. And boys and girls, he is responsible for writing quite a few books in the New Testament. He suffered many things for God, but God loved him and he cared for him. I want you guys to remember that. I'm going to read a portion of scripture to you that has our memory verse in it. And it's found in the first uh, John chapter, uh, First John, not John, but First John, chapter 1, and we're going to start with verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him, of who? Of Jesus. And declare to you that God is light, and in him is no darkness. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we do not tell the truth. If we don't tell the truth, what are we doing? We're lying. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship. In other words, boys and girls, we have friendship with God. We're his children. And we love the things that he loves. The Bible says, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, I don't think there's anybody in here that will say that. We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. And now the memory verse. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins. He is faithful. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I want to make sure all of you know you sin after you got the Holy Ghost. Maybe you do something you disobey. I want you to refer to this check this verse in 1 John 1 and 9. You don't have to go around guilty. You apologize. And then you ask Jesus to forgive you. And this tells you right here that his blood will wash you of that sin. I'm here to tell you, boys and girls, you are almighty in God. You're a mighty witness to this world. You are called out from God, and he loves you. Like I said, I miss being here with you. And we'll see you next time, and God bless.